Let's begin by offering our respects to ISKCON founder Acharya and our preeminent Shiksha Guru, His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. नमस्ते सरस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देशातारिणे हे कृष्ण करुण सिंधु दीन बंधु जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिकाकांत राधाकांत नमोस्तुते तप्त कंचन गौरंगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी ऋषभानु सुते देवी प्रणमा हरी प्रिय वाचकलपतरूव्यश्च कृपा सिंधु व्यच पति पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधार श्रीवासादी गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे प्लीज रिपीट आफ्टर मी ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय 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 Okay, so we welcome all of you to our weekly Bhagavad Gita online classes. We have Thank you. Auntie Nita, Aja, Disha Milwani, Bhumika, Karuna, Khushbu, Lal and Mahik Milwani. Then we have Manju, Neena Bharwani, N.C. Venkatchari, Pavani, Ritu Lalwani, my parents are there. Then we have Sri Radhe Hari Devidasi, Swapna, Vivansh, Vrinda Gopika Mataji, and Joli Nandwani. Okay, so in the previous class, we completed chapter number? 15. 15. And we saw the first Shruti of chapter number? 16. 16. So what is the title of chapter 16? The Divine and de Democratic Natures. Divine and Demoniac. Demoniac Natures. Okay, so Divine and Demoniac Natures. So what is the connection between chapter 15 and chapter 16 that we saw in the previous class? Any 
Anybody remembers? In chapter 15, Krishna explained what in the beginning of the chapter? The divine natures. He described the banyan tree of material existence. Yeah. So we saw how material world is compared to an inverted banyan tree. So when the banyan tree is inverted, the roots are up and the branches are down. So this material world is a reflection of the spiritual world. So the spiritual world can be compared to a banyan tree that is on the banks of the river that is standing straight. But the reflection of the tree can be seen in the river. So this material world is a reflection of the spiritual world. It's only a shadow. No, it's only a shadow. So this is the reason why in the material world, we think that we can enjoy, but we cannot really enjoy. The real enjoyment is in the spiritual world. So the real happiness hmm, uh, is in the spiritual world. Hmm. Uh, the, the, the good quality is the pure quality. Purity is there in the spiritual world. Here, whatever exists is only a perverted reflection of that which exists in the spiritual world. Now, what is the connection between chapter 16 and chapter uh, 15? In that inverted tree, we saw that those who are residing on the upper part of the tree of material existence, they are they are almost, uh, per almost perfect. No, They are very, very close to going back home back to God. So that refers to the higher planetary systems where you have the devatas and the, and the great sages who are residing there. And they are in the mode of goodness they are in the mode of goodness they have divine qualities that's why they are in the upper part of that inverted tree of material existence but those who have demoniac natures they are in the lower parts of the tree so they are yeah, because they have demoniac natures because they are in the modes of passion and ignorance therefore they are not so close to going back home back to god like those like the devatas and the great sages and the residents of the higher planetary systems Okay, so so this is the connection. No, what what is what are those qualities that uh, is required for one to go up higher in that tree of material nature, material existence, and what are the qualities that will take one down and deeper down in this material existence? So therefore, here Krishna is going to explain the divine and demonia natures. Who can read today? Can I read, Mother? Yes. Thank you, Shri Radhe. Oh. So we've already seen the Falashruti. We will directly go to our verse. Let's hear the shloka. Adhashoda Shodhyaya Sri Bhagavan Uvacha Abhayam Sattva Samshudhir Jnana Yoga Vyavasthiti Dhanam Damascha Yagyascha Swadhyayastapa Arjavam Ahimsa Satya Makrodha Tyaga Shanti Rapaishunam Daya Bhute Shvalo Lukvam Mardavam Hira Chapalam Teja Kshamadhriti Shaucham Adroho Nati Manita Bhavanti Sampadam Daivim Abhijatasya Bharata Hare Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, fearlessness, purification of the one's existence, cultivation of spiritual knowledge, charity, self-control, performance of sacrifice, study of the Vedas, astuity, simplicity, non-violence, truthfulness, freedom from anger, renunciation, tranquility, aversion to fault-finding, compassion for all living entities, freedom from covetousness, 
gentleness, modesty, steady determination, vigor, forgiveness, fortitude, cleanliness, and freedom from envy and from the passion or, or honor. These transcendental qualities of Son of Bharata belong to godly men endowed with divine nature. Hare Krishna. So here, Krishna is enlisting the divine qualities. He starts the chapter by first enlisting the divine qualities. So the three verses, the first three verses are dedicated to the divine qualities. And he enlists 26 divine qualities in these first three verses. So let us see them one by one. But before we go to these qualities, uh, we need to understand a few things uh, that Srila Prabhupada explains the purpose. First of all, uh, we need to understand the meaning of this word or the importance of this word, Abhijatasya. Abhijatasya means one who was born of. So one is born with these qualities. Okay, a, a, a soul, uh, when, he, when one takes birth, he has certain qualities. Okay, so one is born with certain qualities, not necessarily with these qualities, but one is born with certain qualities. So again, how can we uh, ensure that the child who is coming to us has divine qualities and not demoniac qualities. Hmm. A person uh, by, I mean, the general general desire of the parents is that they want to have a child with divine qualities. Hmm. So how can one ensure that the child has divine qualities? We have seen. We should thing. have a divine qualities, right? <laughs> uh huh. So how can yeah? So what do we do to ensure? We should pray. Pray. How <laughs> do we pray? And when do we pray? When you are before, when before con before conceiving it. Yes. So you should conceiving. start praying before. Yes. Yes. So what's the samskara? Ritu said, Garbadana samskara. So what is this Garbhadana Samskara? Garbhadana Samskara is done before the child is conceived. So there is, a, there is a Samskara that is done and that ensures that the parents are in Krishna consciousness. No, The mind is, in, is completely absorbed in Krishna. So that mentality of the parents will attract a soul with divine qualities. So uh, when man and woman meet, it should not be out of passion and out of lust and uh, over a glass of whiskey and let's have fun. If that is going to be the mentality, then one will not attract a child with divine qualities. No, Then there is a danger that one will attract a child with demonia qualities. But if one is in the right frame of mind, one is in Krishna consciousness, one is in that mentality, then one can attract a soul with divine qualities. So... This, uh, this word is very, very significant. Srila Prabhupada writes in the purport, no? Abhijatasya, one is born of these qualities. <clears throat> and then, see here, let's read what Prabhupada writes. The word Abhijatasya in reference to one born of transcendental qualities or godly tendencies is very significant. To beget a child in godly atmosphere is known in the Vedic scriptures as Garbhadana Samskara. In Bhagavad Gita, we have studied also before that sex life for begetting a good child is Krishna himself. No, Krishna says that sex life for having a child is, is, is non different from Krishna. So sex life is not condemned, provided the process is used in Krishna consciousness. Those who are in Krishna consciousness at least should not beget children like cats and dogs, but should beget them so that they may become Krishna conscious after birth. That should be the advantage of children born of a father and mother absorbed in Krishna consciousness. So see, these are these samskaras. There are there are many samskaras, and these samskaras are very, very important. So even before the child is conceived, mm -hmm. or even before conception, there is a Garbhadhana samskara. And what is the last samskara that is done for the living entity? Daha samskar. Daha samskar or Antim Sanskar after the person passes away right so like that these samskaras are very very important then uh, some other important samskaras uh, we have um, vivaha samskara no marriage ceremony vivaha samskara then before vivaha samskara we have the thread ceremony isn't it the the thread is put no actually that is not before marriage that is when a child goes to school that's when that thread ceremony should be done. But nowadays it is done out of uh, formality just before marriage. Sometimes it is done just one day before marriage. No? But actually that is to be done when the child goes to school. 
then we have vidya arambha samskara uh, when just before when the the child is uh, taught to write then uh, when the child is 6 months old we do the anna prasana uh, samskara which is the first grain that is fed to the child is actually mahaprasad and we discussed in the previous class how the the lord of uh, digestion no for digestion vaishnavan vaishnava vaishnava nara i think if i'm not mistaken he is invoked so that the uh, he can recite and the food can be nicely digested so the first grain that is uh, given to the child should be mahaprasad you know and um, the lord of digestion is invoked uh, to recite in the child's body so like that these all these samskaras are very very important but because of the influence of kali yuga now uh, hardly anybody does these samskaras uh, and it is reduced to the bare minimum and it is also done um, more out of formality you know in the in the modern age anyway so with the garbhadana samskara we can ensure that the child uh, that is being born to us has divine qualities what is the advantage if the child that is born to us has divine qualities does it affect the parents of course how and why you will have peace at home <laughs> you will have peace at home yes very nice the parents will be happy parents the child will be happy. children yes and you can yes, also learn life. from you can also learn from the kid <laughs> yes we can also learn no we can also learn from the children very nice if we become devotees seven generations will be liberated ah yes exactly shastra says that a pure devotee can liberate up to 100 generations before and after him a pure devotee can liberate up to 100 generations so just imagine just imagine how powerful it is to invoke a, a child with divine qualities okay then shila prabhupad in the purport he explains uh, about the varnashram system we need to understand this because these qualities that krishna explains in this uh, these first three verses there are some qualities uh, that are more for a specific uh, ashram you no know, more for a specific category of people in the society some are for all of them so that therefore we need to understand the varnashram system again so what is this varnashram dharma varnashram system is the division of the society into four divisions of social life and four occupational divisions so when the society is divided divided according to one's occupation then that division is brahmana kshatriya vaishya and shudra the brahmanas have a certain occupation what is the occupation of the brahmanas what do they do they give shiksha they do puja yes they give knowledge then knowledge. they are the educators of the society now they are the teachers of the society then kshatriyas mm. warriors they warriors. are warriors. warriors so what do they have warriors. to do protect they have to protect isn't it they have to protect, protect. vaishyas are they merchants they do business businessmen yes businessmen the mercantile class so and mm -hmm. uh, and the shudras shudra they are so they work the working class service yeah the working service class they render service so brahmana kshatriya vaishya and shudra who is the one who is most respected brahmana brahmanas, brahmanas are most respected but does that mean yeah. that the shudras if that the society can do without the shudras no 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 because with the yes see if the if the society is compared to a body a human body brahmanas are the heads of the society kshatriyas are the arms of the society vaishyas are compared to the stomach of the society and shudras are compared to the legs mm -hmm. now can a person say that okay if i don't have my legs i can still continue to do whatever i want to do will of anybody say it's okay if my legs go no no we need our legs as much as we need the stomach as much as we need the arms as much as we need the head so even if one of these four are absent of the society it there will be a handicap just as how we would be handicapped if we do not have a, 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 our head or arms or stomach or legs no we will be handicapped so therefore all these are important in for a smooth working of a varnashram system therefore all of them are to be valued all of them are to be respected 
now now having said that can we technically live without the legs but without the head no so that also we cannot do no so therefore brahmanas are uh, most uh, respected but e all of them are equally important in our society so the modern day system of uh, niche jati and uh, low caste and untouchability and all these things are only a, a, a perverted version of the varnashram system that actually krishna established actually krishna established now krishna also says that one must do his duty even if he does it imperfectly it's okay but he should not do somebody else's work even if he does it perfectly why this was actually very strictly implemented uh, in the previous ages no that's the reason why there was so much opposition <laughs> when karna wanted to do the work of ashatriya and he was told that actually you are uh, uh, the son of a carpenter no uh, a shudra class <laughs> now it was not revealed of course that his he was actually born in a ashatriya family it was not revealed that's why his natural tendency was of ashatriya but there was a lot of opposition in society so what what i'm trying to say is in the previous ages this was very strictly uh, implemented that one should do his own work and not do the work of another ashram why because one knows his own work what to do it doesn't mean that uh, king will uh, kshatriya will knows the work of shudra and they, they can't do that shudra's work or vaishnava's vaishyas vaishyas work they so have their they own they can do even let's say technically they can do so let's say a kshatriya knows the work that a shudra does because he is trained up in the gurukul to do all kinds they of they will stuff. misuse ha huh? they will misuse even if they don't misuse it let's say he is a divine person and he will not misuse is it because they all uh, follow certain principles uh, the, the, for kshatriyas follow different and shudras follow different yeah there there are different rules and regulations for each class yes that is correct but is the it because of is, that what will happen is it because of that they should stick on to what they are learned <laughs> they are taught okay so what will happen if they don't stick to it okay what determines if a person is brahmana kshatriya vaishya shudra is it the birth if somebody is born in a brahman family he is a brahman no so no. what determines it's... whether one is a brahmana kshatriya vaishya or shudra his karma yeah, his, 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 his the nature work. of a person isn't it the Beach nature China. of the person so if one has brahmanical qualities then he is a brahmana if one has kshatriya qualities then one is a kshatriya so it is not birth that determines whether one is brahmana kshatriya vaishya now we know now we see in fact many cases where people are born in brahmana families but they are not engaging in brahmanical uh, activities they don't have brahmanical nature no so the activities that one does and the nature one has is what determines whether one is brahmana kshatriya vaishya or shudra one may be born in a shudra family but if his activities are such are elevated and he has brahmanical qualities then he should be respected as a brahmana he should be respected as a brahmana hmm. now let's uh, now let's try to understand what happens now if one has brahmanical qualities it is his nature no it is his nature but he does work of a shudra will he be happy never no. there will be dissatisfaction isn't it now if one is one has the qualities of a shudra and he does the work of a brahmana will he be happy no no, no because it's not in his nature it's not in his nature no and also at some point that um, uh, the efficiency of delivering in that in a different uh, ashram in a different varna will not uh, uh, he will not be able to deliver at at important crucial key moments one example is from the mahabharat now on the side of the kauravas we had dronacharya who was fighting the war like a kshatriya but was dronacharya kshatriya no he was a brahman 
he was a brahmana isn't it but what brahmana. happened now when when his son when he was told that his son ashwadhamma has been killed actually he was told that ashwadhamma has been killed no it was a trick that was played the elephant ashwadhamma mm -hmm. uh, was killed was killed but dronacharya when he, he so he understood that actually his son has been killed what happened at that time he became so overwhelmed with emotions that he put aside his uh, bow and arrow and he just sat down and he refused to fight now he was so overwhelmed with the news of the death of his son that he just could not fight anymore and therefore then he was killed by the opposite party now the same thing happened with arjuna arjuna also got the news that his son abhimanyu has been killed and he was mercilessly killed mercilessly killed by six warriors you know mm. in fact even he was asking for water at the time of death but they did not give him even water this is this is one uh, one uh, one of the things that has uh, that can be <clears throat> held against karna because karna is uh, celebrated as danvir karna you no know? he was a very he was a very charitable man but that time when abhimanyu was asking for water at the time of death karna refused to give him even water even he did not give him that water and danvir karna did not give him water at the time of death and it was in that same puddle of water that karna's chariot got stuck when he was killed mm. okay anyway coming back to what we were discussing so even arjuna got the news that um, his son abhimanyu has been killed did arjuna lay his arms down no 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 he, he got came furious. with all the more uh, furiousness in order to fight the war the next day isn't it why because by nature he is a kshatriya by nature is a kshatriya mm -hmm. but dronacharya by nature he is a brahmana but he was doing the work of a kshatriya and the war so therefore he got so overwhelmed with emotions that he was not able to take it and then that caused his death in the war so like this when somebody is in one has a nature of one <clears throat> category and he does the work of another category it will not work it will not work okay so therefore this was implemented very very strictly in the previous ages of course now in kali yuga this um, this varnashram system also has become corrupted like many other things in kali yuga okay lavina you have your hand raised yeah if uh, dronacharya was a brahman then why did he came in the battlefield to do this um, <coughs> to fight against uh, uh, pandavas or anybody yeah because he was employed he was an employer of hastinapur and because he had this obligation towards hastinapur he was like he was receiving a salary you no know? he was employed he was employee and therefore it was his obligation to fight in this emergency emergency situation mm -hmm. that's why but he was employed as a guru means uh, as a teacher for their children or uh, as a warrior I yeah means, he was uh, no he was employed as a teacher but because this was an emergency situation it he was required to fight okay. as an exceptional case thank you thank you mother you're welcome okay so and the other division of society is according to the stages of life what is the stages what are the four stages of life brahmacharya grihastha vanaprastha and sanyas so student life married life uh, retired life and renounced life sanyas is renounced life say if one lives for 100 years 100 years is the average human life at the beginning of kali yuga 25 years as a student 25 years as married Uh, as a married person, twenty-five years retired life and twenty-five years as the as a renounced life, know. one should be ideally living. So, at what age one should take retirement? If one assumes that one lives for one hundred years, fifty, fifty, yes, fifty, yeah, fifty-first year is the age for retirement. If one lives for one hundred, one hundred years. Now, if one lives for eighty years, then twenty, 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 and twenty. So what is fifty one in Hindi? Ikya one. Ikya one. Ikya one. No, ikya one. So that ikya one, that word in Hindi, that has the word one, and here mm -hmm. va and retirement is vana prastha. Pras vana prastha means walk out, go to the, go to the forest. So see the mm -hmm. the beauty of our language that 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 number ikya one itself tells you that it's now time for retirement. Vana prastha. 
So anyway, uh, so we need to understand this so that we can discuss which quality, um, what are the qualities that, that are more specifically required for a certain category of these people. Mm -hmm. So the first three qualities, fearlessness, purification of one's existence and cultivation of spiritual knowledge, Srila Prabhupada explains, is for the sannyasis. So the first divine quality is fearlessness. So fearlessness, why is it that a sannyasi should specifically be fearless? What is the danger that a sannyasi faces? Falling, falling. Okay. Does a sannyasi have any kind of protection? No. Does he have a home? Does he have a fixed income? Does he have a family in case no. he falls sick, no. in case there is death, in case there's an emergency situation? Is there? So a sannyasi is completely dependent on the mercy of the Lord. No, he does not have a fixed income. He does not have, he just goes around begging from door to door. Sometimes he may receive something in charity. Sometimes he may not receive something in charity. The day he does not receive anything, then that day he has to go without eating. No, So, and he may be attacked sometimes by people, some crazy people, somebody's alcohol, under the alcohol or some wild animals. So therefore, for a sannyasi, fearlessness is a very, very important quality. So here, fear is one of the four factors of material existence. Everyone has fear because of contacting a material body. Fear, fear is relative to how much dependence one has on material energy rather than God or spiritual life. So the more we, are, we have faith in God, that much more fearless we will be. That much more fearless will be because one has full faith that Krishna will protect me no matter what. Fear comes from attachment and dependence on material conditions. So the more we think that our wealth, our contacts, our gun, our beauty will save us, that much more we are going to be fearful. That much more we are going to be fearful. Fear originally means fear of death. So this is the greatest fear, fear of death. Why we have this fear is because nobody wants to die and we are in this material nature where death is forced upon us. But a devotee is abhaya. A devotee is fearless because he takes complete shelter of Krishna. Hmm. See, there is a bhajan by Govinda Das Kaviraj. He says, Bhaja hure mana, Shri Nanda Nandana, Abhaya Charanara Vindare. O mind, just worship the lotus feet of the son of Nanda, which makes one fearless. Fearless. So the more we, we hold on to the lotus feet of Guru and Krishna, the more we will be fearless. What was Srila Prabhupada's name? I mean, what is the name that Srila Prabhupada was given by his parents? Anybody knows? Abhai. Abhai. Abhai means? Fearless. No fear. Fearless. Fearless. Actually, the name he was given was Abhai Charan. Abhay Charan, okay. And when he received initiation yes. from Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he was given the name? Srila Prabhupada's name, first initiation was, is... Abhay Charan Aravinda. No? Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur added this word Aravinda to his name. So Abhaya Charan Aravinda is the name that Srila Prabhupada got from his spiritual master at the time of his initiation, first initiation. Okay, so what does that word Aravinda mean? Aravinda means? Charan means feet. So Charan Aravinda means what kind of feet? Lotus feet. Lotus feet. Yes, lotus, lotus feet. feet. Aravinda means lotus. Okay. So this word Aravinda was added to Srila Prabhupada's name. 
Okay, so this verse we know from the seventh uh, chapter, this divine energy of mind consisting of the three modes of material nature is difficult to overcome, Krishna says. But this very difficult thing to overcome can be easily crossed over by who? By those who have surrendered unto me. So things become very, very easy when we surrender to Krishna. Therefore, a devotee becomes fearless when one completely depends on the lotus feet of the Lord. So then what's the next quality? Purification of one's existence. Purification of one's existence. So it's very, very important that a sannyasi, actually for all, see all these qualities are for all categories of people, but more so uh, for a certain category. Mm -hmm. So fearlessness, purification of one's existence and cultivation of spiritual knowledge, Srila Prabhupada explains, is that even more it is important for the sannyasis. Purification of one's existence. So one has to maintain oneself pure mentally, um, internally and externally. So, for a speci specifically a sannyasi has to maintain himself pure. Now, see, Srila Prabhupada explains in the purport that um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is considered to be the most merciful of all the incarnations. You know? He is referred to as the Parama Karuna. Parama Karuna. So, this uh, song says Parama Karuna Pahu Dvi Jana, these two personalities, Dvi Jana, who are they? Nitai Gaurachandra, Lord Nityananda and Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Nitai Gaurachandra. Sabha Avatara of all the Avataras, Sara Shiromani, they are the crest jewel, they are the crown jewel of all the Avataras. Kevala Ananda Kanda, why they are so, uh, why they are so significant, why they are the most significant of all the incarnations is because they have introduced a, a method which only gives Ananda, which only gives joy. What is that method they introduced? Chanting and dancing. So we know that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the one who gave us this Maha Mantra, which previously was a hidden mantra, but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave it to us. And he uh, uh, he relaxed all the rules and regulations with regard to the chanting of this Mahamantra. So one does not have to follow rules, strict rules and regulations like how it was in the previous ages. So, so Srila Prabhupada explains that even Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the most munificent, the most merciful of all incarnations, even he um, did not excuse Haridas for a mistake. Now there was one, he had one uh, devotee by the name Junior Haridas. So let's read this. One of Mahaprabhu's associates, Junior Haridas, committed a great mistake by lustfully glancing at a young woman. So he glanced lustfully. The Lord as super soul could detect his lust in the mind of Junior Haridas, who was at once banished from the Lord's association and was never accepted again, even though the Lord was implored to excuse Haridas for the mistake. Junior Haridas afterwards committed suicide due to being disassociated from the company of the Lord and the news of suicide was duly related to the Lord. Even at that time, the Lord was not forgetful of the offense and he said that Haridas had rightly met with the proper punishment. So just say, even the most merciful of all, all incarnations was not ready to excuse or forgive uh, junior Haridas, even after he had committed suicide, he said that he has rightly met with the proper punishment. So therefore, uh, it's very, very important, especially for a sannyasi, especially for a devotee, to maintain his purity. So even by glancing, although he didn't engage in the any lustful, I mean, he did not unite with the union, unite with the woman, but just by lustfully glancing also, you no. Know? So even that glance is sex, but it is subtle sex. It is subtle sex. So that also, um, you can see how Prab uh, Mahaprabhu was not willing to forgive. See, I, in relation to this, <clears throat> I came across this, uh, this class by Srila Prabhupada. This is actually recorded as the shortest class by Srila Prabhupada. So Srila Prabhupada has arrived in Atlanta. And as the arrival address, he says, So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is very kind. Parama Karuna, Pahu Dvi Jana. Two lords, Nitai Gaurachandra, Nityananda Prabhu and Lord Chaitanya 
and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. They are very kind, you see. They have appeared just to reclaim the fallen souls of this age. So they are more kind than Krishna. Krishna, he is also kind. He comes to deliver. But Krishna demands that first of all surrender. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu even does not demand surrender. He is so kind. So here Srila Prabhupada's voice starts to choke. You know, he's getting emotional. He starts to cry. So take shelter of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and be happy. Thank you very much. Weeping. So Srila Prabhupada starts to cry when he's describing the merciful uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. No? See the extent of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The extent of the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu makes Srila Prabhupada cry. And then he ended the class. So this is recorded as Srila Prabhupada's shortest class actually. Anyway, <clears throat> let's come back to... Mataji, Mataji, this shortage class that has been recorded, will you be kind enough to share it with us in the group? So we can yes, I will it. share the slides at the end of the class. No, 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 not the slide, but uh, yeah, slide two, but the, the class. This is the, the class. class. The slide no, is no, the no, class. No, yeah, this one. This we, you just read? Yeah, so this slide will be shared along with all the other slides in the at the end no, of the class. No, this doesn't have an audio recording? No, I don't have the audio. I don't have the audio. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, so fearlessness, purification of one's existence, then cultivation of spiritual knowledge. So we know that the sannyasis should also cultivate uh, spiritual knowledge. They have to learn the Shastra and they also have to teach the Shastra to the others. They have to distribute it to the others, especially to the householders. You no know, Householders and others who have forgotten their lost relationship with Krishna. So these sannyasis, they go begging from door to door. Srila Prabhupada explains that they go begging from door to door. Not because they are beggars. No, they are actually doing a favor to the grihasthas, to the householders. They are giving them an opportunity to serve. And they're there and like and like that, they also get the opportunity to associate with the sannyasis. And there is some inter-exchange of some uh, knowledge. Even when we do the samskaras, we call the brahmanas to the house. And uh, there is uh, the brahmana's duty also is, uh, yes, he will do the samskara for you. And also at the same time, he will tell you, you know, that uh, the goal of human life is not to engage in sense gratification. The goal of human life is actually to develop love of God. So like that, the brahmana, when they come home, it is their duty to give some Vedic knowledge to the grihasthas and give them their association. So the sannyasis are not going door to door begging for food because they are beggars. Or because they don't they can't do without the food but it's actually it's their mercy that they are doing that so like that they can give us their knowledge then what is the fourth quality let's go what's the fourth quality who can spot it charity charity, charity isn't it dhanam so who should give charity <laughs> brahman the the students or the householders or the retired people, or the renounced people? Householders. Householders, isn't it? So every householder, it's the duty of the householder to give in charity, to give in charity. Because they are the only ones who are earning. Are the students earning? No. Are the married people earning? No. Married people they are earning? Are. Yes. yes. Yeah, they are earning. They are. are the retired people earning? No. Yes. No. The retired people don't earn. Do they yes, get a pension? Pension. 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 She's talking about pension. <laughs> yeah, that pension is sufficient only for their bare maintenance. No. And in the previous ages, it, there was no pension. If one is retired, okay. one, one just vana prasta means one walks out in the forest. So there is no question of them uh, getting an income. Then uh, renounced. Are the renounced people uh, earning? No. No. So the only no. people in this Varnashram system who have an income is the Grihastha. So a Grihastha mm -hmm. should maintain the other three categories. Mm -hmm. So it's the duty of every Grihastha to give in charity. But can charity be given to anyone, everyone, and under any circumstances, any place, any time? No. no. Charity should be only given for Krishna conscious activities. Only for Krishna conscious activities. Otherwise, it is simply a waste of time, Srila Prabhupada says. Otherwise, one will be more entangled in this material world. For example, if one gives charity and the person with that charity purchases meat, it's not good neither for that person, neither for a person mm -hmm. who has given charity. So both of them will remain entangled in the cycle of birth and death because one who has given is also going to be implicated uh, in that karmic reaction. 
no because he it is he who has purchased it with his it is with his money that that meat was purchased so therefore charity should be given to those people who you know will use the money in the in a krishna conscious activity. right way yes in the right way in a krishna conscious activity otherwise it's a waste of time okay then what's the next quality self control self control self control so this is also especially for the householders now the householders they are they they are married no they have a partner but then they are allowed to engage in uh, to unite for the sake of having krishna conscious children under the right mentality in the right mood you know? so therefore self control for the grihasthas is very very important then what's the next one performance of sacrifice performance of sacrifice this is also especially for the grihasthas why because a fire sacrifice a yagya requires a uh, opulence no it requires wealth it's not so easy it's not so cheap there are many ingredients that are required especially in the previous ages yagya was a very very opulent affair no and one mm. would uh, invite so many people and distribute so much prasad and lot of wealth and opulence would be required to do a yagya imagine when yudhishthir maharaj did the rajsuya sacrifice actually arjuna went in search of wealth uh, to different mm. kingdoms no therefore he is called as dhananjaya so like this uh, because performance of sacrifice also requires wealth it is for the grihasthas grihasthas are only one who are earning but now in kali yuga what is the what is the sacrifice recommended sacrifice in kali yuga is it dagni hotra the fire sacrifice what is the recommended sacrifice just bhakti yes but the sense control sense mm -hmm. control sacrifice sacrifice yagya which yagya oh, yeah. yagya who can fill the blanks what is it that chaitanya mahaprabhu has recommended for kali yoga sankirtan yama kirtana yagya the chanting of the holy name is a recommended sacrifice for the kali yoga Okay, next. What's the next item? Study of Veda. Study, Study of, of Veda. Vedas, especially Sri Prabhupada explains this for the Brahmacharis because the Brahmachari, the student, when he goes to the Gurukul, he has to study the Vedas. He should be uh, appropriately educated in Vedic knowledge. And the Brahmachari there, he maintains celibacy. He maintains celibacy, so he is not uh, allowed to have any kind of contact with women when they go to the Gurukul. there is no question of the students engaging with any kind of contact with women and they would uh, they have to completely focus uh, only on their vedic study so the whole focus is only on the studies so there is no question of any distraction unlike the modern age where there is so much of distraction for the children when they go to schools okay what is the next item austerity Aust austerity or tapasya mm -hmm. now austerity tapasya is by the body mind and tongue so austerity especially is for the retired class for the vana prastas as we discussed one should be retired uh, after one finishes his 50th year so shila prabhupada writes in the purport that without tapasya no human being can get liberated without tapasya no human being can get liberated so liberation is not so is not so cheap no it requires tapasya it requires austerity so we have to perform austerity of body mind and tongue body how do we perform austerity of body when we do these fast janmashtami ekadashi these are all austerities of the body austerity of the mind is we don't think we don't contaminate our consciousness and what is the austerity of the tongue is chant chant and eat prasadam eat prasadam yeah. so two activities of the tongue no to speak and to taste so we can perform mm -hmm. austerity of the tongue by eating prasadam and chanting the holy name okay what is the next item simplicity 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 so simplicity is for all the ashrams no one has to be mm -hmm. simple and simplicity. straightforward in one's dealings not that one is playing politics all these things are not the um, 
are not suitable for one's advancement in spiritual life. It's not a divine quality. <clears throat> uh, I mean, simplicity is a divine quality. The, the, the simpler we are, the, the higher we are on the tree of material existence. So one should be very simple in one's dealings. Then what's the next item? Non-violence. Non Non-violence. Non ahimsa. Now, what is real ahimsa? What is real ahimsa is one should not check the progress of another living entity, another jiva. If you check the progress of another living entity, then one is engaging in violence. So, Srila Prabhupada explains mm -hmm. that. See, when one, when, when one engages in meat eating, now one animal is killed before time. Now, let's say uh, a, a jiva had to live for 20 years in an animal's body. But that animal was killed for his flesh because somebody wants to eat it. The demand is there in the market. So he was killed for his flesh when he was 10 years old, for example. Now what happens is he had to actually spend 20 years in that animal's body. But because he was killed when he was 10 years old, he has to again come back, again take birth in that same body and live the rest of his uh, remaining 10 years. <clears throat> so we are actually interfering with the progress of that jiva. So non-violence means not arresting the progressive life of any living entity. That is real non-violence. That is real ahimsa. <clears throat> then what's the next item? <clears throat> Truthfulness. Truthfulness. Satyam. So do not distort the truth for personal interest. Do not distort the truth for your own personal interest. So sometimes people when they preach, a, 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 a guru who is not bona fide, a so-called guru, he starts to preach that it's okay, you can eat meat. It's okay, you can engage in intoxication. Once in a while, it's okay. No? Or uh, there are no rules and uh, regulations. There are no restrictions. No fasting is required. Nothing is to be required. You can just uh, take this magic mantra from me and you are safe. And the person also uh, gets fooled by this non-bona fide guru and he takes initiation. But what happens? Such a guru goes he to hell. And all his followers also will go to hell. Because if one is preaching that which is not in the Shastras, then it is only a cheating philosophy. It is a society of the cheater and the cheated. Cheater and the cheated. So one should not distort the truth for your own personal interest. Then what's the next item? Growth. Freedom for anger. Krodha, akrodha, sorry, akrodha. Akrodha means freedom from anger. So one should be tolerant even when provocated. One should be tolerant even when provocated. See, there is a very nice quote here by Srila Prabhupada from Krishna book. Srila Prabhupada writes there, one's greatness can be estimated by one's ability to tolerate provoking situation. So the more mm -hmm. we can tolerate when we are provoked, that will show more our greatness. So what a, this is one of my favorite quotes from Srila Prabhupada. One's greatness has to be estimated by one's ability to tolerate provoking situation. So Akro, the freedom from anger. See, because anger, Srila Prabhupada writes that it pollutes the whole body. It pollutes the whole body. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> See, and yeah, coming back to anger. So there are examples of how the Lord is always with one who is tolerating. So who is this personality here on the screen? Prahlad Maharaj. Prahlad. Did he tolerate the provoking situation? Yes. yes. So many yes. times. Yes. No? His father tried to kill him in so many ways, but he always tolerated. He always had full faith in Krishna. Who is this? Not a simple. Mm -hmm. The this is the Muni. Um, this one, Durvasam. Yes, this is Durvasa Muni, and this king is Ambrish Muni. Ambrish the king. Ambrish. Ambrish. Yes, king Ambrish, isn't it? King Ambrish. So, uh, Durvasa Muni felt very offended because Ambrish. Uh, At what time does the class end? When? Okay, so Ambarish Maharaj had invited Durvasa Muni and Durvasa Muni said, I will go for a bath and return. But at that time, Ambarish Maharaj had kept the Ekadasi fast and Ekadasi fast should be broken at the right time. No, So mm -hmm. the, the time to break the fast was ticking away 
and durvasa had not yet returned so his advice is advised him okay you drink water by drinking water you have broken the fast and at the same time you don't break the fast but when so he did that and when uh, uh, just was when he was uh, drinking that water durvasa returned and he was furious he said that you have insulted your guest by consuming without the guest because it is a matter of etiquette that you don't eat if you have guests then you you consume after the guest no so before it is uh, an insult i don't guest. understand i don't understand uh, this this maharshi he knows the way the everything very well how to when you should stop fasting everything right the rules and everything then how can be he mad so there are many things that we know but we do not apply not necessary all those the Bra no it's not necessary that all brahmanas are devotees not necessary that all that brahmanas are vaishnavas that he is not a great muni a great uh, sage not yet not yet one can become a pure devotee but right now at this stage he is not a pure devotee okay but he can oh. become one okay all right so then he was offended but ambarish maharaj he tolerated he tolerated that and he had full faith in krishna of course we know then the durvasamuni went to lord shiva he went to lord brahma he went to lord vishnu and they all said that you will not be forgiven because the sudarshan chakra started to follow durvasamuni and to escape okay. from the sudarshan chakra he went to all these uh, three devatas but then finally he had to come back to ambarish and he asked forgiveness from ambarish and ambarish maharaj because he is a great vaishnava he immediately forgave him and then the sudarshan chakra spared the life of durvasa muni so he was also tolerating who is this from the mahabharat this is draupadi draupadi yes who is draupadi protecting here Who is Draupadi protecting mm -hmm. here? Is it Ashwatthama? His sons? Ashwatthama. Ashwatthama, yes. Mm -hmm. Why? Why do they want to kill Ashwatthama? Because he killed the Pandav, the five Pandav kids. The five sons of the Pandavas. He killed the five mm -hmm. sons of the Pandavas. So here, Draupadi is protecting the very person who killed her sons. Imagine a mother. Huh? Her five sons have been killed in their sleep. and still she doesn't want her husbands to kill him because what did she say she doesn't brahma. want his mother to feel the, the same brahma. pain that like she's feeling yeah he, first of all she said that he is a brahmana and then secondly she said that i am now without my sons but at least i have my husbands but uh, the wife of uh, dronacharya Abhi. no Abhi. already she has lost already she has lost her husband dronacharya has already passed away but now if you kill mm -hmm. ashwadhama she will be even without her son so mm -hmm. let him live no and so you can see how compassionate draupadi is how compassionate she is <laughs> who is this haridas 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 thakur he was mercilessly whipped by the servants of the kazi the kazi said that you stop chanting the holy name otherwise we will whip you he said that even if you uh, even if you cut my body into several pieces still i will not stop chanting hmm? so even he was very very tolerant actually uh, although they whipped him in 22 marketplaces still he would not die because he was protected protected by chaitanya mahaprabhu but then finally those people who are whipping him they pleaded they pleaded to him and they said that if you don't die the king he will kill us so therefore haridas thakur out of mercy for these very people who are whipping him he faked his death he faked his death they thought that he has died and they threw the body in the water but then uh, after he floated for some time then he 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 just walked out of the water no so he faked his death only to protect these very people who are actually whipping him so you can see the lord is always with one who is tolerating but now that does that mean that we should always tolerate and never retaliate no so no. there we should know how mm. to draw the line so here see the, from the pope shri la prabhupada explains there is a short story about a snake who became a devotee upon instruction by narada who instructed him not to bite any more mm. since ordinarily a snake's business is to fatally bite other living entities as a devotee he was forbidden to do so unfortunately <coughs> people took advantage of this non violence on part of the snake especially the children 
who began to throw stones at him. He did not bite anyone, however, because it was the instruction of his spiritual master. After a while, when the snake met his spiritual master, Narada, he complained, I have given up the bad habit of biting innocent living entities, but they are mistreating me by throwing stones at me. Upon hearing this, Narada Muni instructed him, Do not bite, but do not forget to expand your hood as if you were going to bite. Then they will go away. Similarly, a devotee is always non-violent. He is qualified with all good characteristics. But in the common world, when there is mischief made by others, he should not forget to become angry, at least for the time being, in order to drive away the miscreants. So don't forget to show your is the lesson. See, Srila Prabhupada writes in the Nectar of Instruction, anger can be controlled. We cannot stop anger altogether, but if we simply become angry with those who blaspheme the Lord or the devotees of the Lord, we control our anger in Krishna consciousness. So one should use the anger in Krishna consciousness against those people who are blaspheming the Lord or the devotees of the Lord. So if somebody is insulting the Lord, if somebody is insulting a devotee of the Lord, if somebody is insult insulting a spiritual master, then yes, we should be angry. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became angry with the miscreant brothers, Jagai and Madai, who blasphemed and struck Nityananda Prabhu. So we know Jagai and Madai, the two drunkards, whom Nityananda Prabhu wanted to uh, transform into devotees. He requested them to chant the holy name, but they were struck by, I mean, Nityananda Prabhu was struck by Madai with the with a, with a earthen pot and Nityananda Prabhu was bleeding. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was so furious. Immediately he came there and he invoked the Sudarshan Chakra. Now Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, he is a he is an incarnation who who does not use any weapons. No, he is the most merciful incarnation. He never uses any weapons. But even Chaitanya Mahaprabhu at that time he invoked the Sudarshan Chakra. He was so furious that Nityananda Prabhu, a devotee, no, actually his Balaram, was struck. So that's what Srila Prabhupada is explain, explaining here. One should be ready to tolerate all insults to one's own self. But when Krishna or his pure devotee is blasphemed, a genuine devotee becomes angry and acts like fire against the offenders. Pro the anger cannot be stopped, but it can be applied rightly. It was an anger that Hanuman set fire to Lanka. But he is worshipped as the greatest devotee of Lord Ramachandra. This means that he has utilized his anger in the right way. Arjuna serves as another serves as another example. He was not willing to fight, but Krishna incited his anger. You must fight. To fight without anger is not possible. Anger is controlled, however, when utilized in the service of the Lord. Another very nice lecture by Srila Prabhupada. He writes, he says, anger, a devotee should anger, a devotee should not be angry, but that does not mean that he has lost his capacity of anger. No, everything is there. Just like a person does not have illicit sex, that does not mean he has no sexual capacity. He has full sexual capacity, but he does not want to do it unless it is required for a certain purpose. That example is given just like the tortoise. The tortoise, as soon as he likes, he opens his different limbs from the body and as soon as he does not like, immediately whines within the body. So we should be like that. That is real control. So, vimanya vaha means that a devotee does not generally become angry, but that does not mean that he has lost his power of becoming angry. No, he can become angry at any time when it is required. And he should be angry. He is angry. Krodha Bhakta Dveshi Janam. He will be angry when there is somebody who is against God and God's devotee. He will be angry. As soon as one says, blasphemes that I am God, there is no God. Immediately he should be very angry because he is preaching false things. He is blaspheming against the Supreme Lord. That he is making God as very cheap. He should be angry. Bhakta Dveshi. So how much uh, so we should be very angry when? When there is anything against God and God's devotees. But generally for my personal interest, I should not be angry. So if, so if somebody is insulting us, then we should not be angry. But if somebody is insulting the Lord and the devotees of the Lord, then one should be angry. So anger also in the service of the Lord. All right. If you like to call me by, my, by ill names, I don't mind. 
you go on with your business i do not become angry so just like hanuman ji vajrang bali but vajrang ji he set fire in the kingdom of ravan a very beautiful kingdom almost made of gold but he set fire in the capital of lanka he became very angry but why he became angry not for his own personal interest but he was angry for the interest of lord ram sita the lakshmi wife of lord ram was kidnapped by this man ravan and he was very angry that he has kidnapped the lord's spiritual energy sita i shall set fire in this very valuable capital so this anger this demonstration of anger and setting fire was accepted as service so we should know when to be angry not that for our personal interest we shall be generally those who are devotees they are not angry so this is how we use anger in the service of the lord so here we have hanuman and we have narsimha dev narsimha dev also was very very angry he was furious at hiranyakashipu because hiranyakashipu was torturing his very dear devotee prahlad so this is here you can see how chaitanya mahaprabhu has invoked the sudarshan chakra to kill madai because he had struck lord nityananda with his with that earthen pot and this is arjuna when he was incited by krishna himself to fight the war so this is examples of people who use the anger in the service of krishna what is the next quality renunciation renunciation tyaga so renunciation also renunciation does not mean that we have to give up things it means that we use the things in the service of krishna we don't have to give up money but we can use the money in the service of krishna right so when we use the things in the service of krishna then that is real renunciation then what's the next one tranquility tranquility shanti so one a devotee should be equipoised no he should be very very peaceful he should not be agitated in disturbing circumstances okay next aversion to fault finding aversion to fault finding so shila prabhupada explains that if one calls a thief a thief that is okay no that's not finding fault mm -hmm. because you are calling a thief a thief but to call mm -hmm. an innocent man a thief that is fault finding that is fault mm -hmm. finding so some people have this mentality of only seeing faults mm -hmm. uh, they will go to a festival everything will be perfect in the festival but still they will find fault with some little small thing that went wrong mm -hmm. or if they go to or even with people no with devotees they will find faults in devotees even though a devotee may have very good many many very good qualities but they will find fault there also with some devotees so that is called as the a uh, fly mentality hmm? fly mentality mm -hmm. what does the fly do the fly is always looking for dirty filthy places to reside no it is only getting getting attracted to the dirty filthy places in contrast to a bee the will you ever see a bee in us in a sewage area for example no no, no. you will only find <laughs> a bee looking for nectar looking for nectar in the different flowers mm -hmm. so that's called as a bee mentality when one uh, uh, appreciates and recognizes the good qualities of people one has the bee mentality but one, but when one looks for faults then it is called as a fly mentality so one should not um, be uh, engaged in fault finding what is the next quality compassion for all living things yeah living mercy entity. no one should see mm. mercy real mercy is when we can help a person to reunite with the with his lost father no so when you mm. engage in uh, activities like distribution of prasadam distribution of books preaching or anything that can help a uh, jeeva revive his lost relationship with god then that is real mercy then mm. what's the next one is a bhuteshu towards the, all the living entities no okay so bhutesu freedom yeah, from that is COVID. mercy to all the living entities then after that what do we have freedom from covid freedom oh. from covetousness greed. No, freedom covetousness. from greed freedom from greed so one should uh, one should not be greedy right we we know this uh, we have learned this before and therefore mm. when we when we give charity and when we are renounced 
then we can overcome this uh, habit of being greedy. I want, I want, everything is for me. Therefore, when we give charity, you know, when we donate, then we can overcome this uh, nature of greed. Then what's the next? Yes, gentleness. Gentleness, yes. No? gentleness. One should be friendly to all the living entities. One should be gentle to all the living entities. All these qualities that we are discussing now are for all the categories in that Varnashram system. Mm -hmm. Okay, next. Modesty. Modesty. One should not perform in abominable acts. One should not perform in, uh, in, in sinful activities. One should not perform in activities that will make our parents or our spiritual master ashamed of us. No, We should not engage in abominable acts. One should be very modest in his dealings. Next. Determination. Determination. One should not be agitated. One should not be frustrated. One should not be disappointed when we are doing bhakti and then there is failure or we are not able to advance or some mm -hmm. there is um, there are some setbacks for us in our devotional life. No. One should continue to advance with full determination. We have to be steady in our spiritual practices. We should not be disappointed by failures. Next. Vigor. Vigor. Yeah. This is especially meant for the Kshatriyas because that Tejas, no, that Tej, that Vigor is especially meant for the Kshatriyas because they have to be very, very strong. Why they have to be very strong is because they have to give protection to all the people and all the living entities, all the Jivas who are and in their kingdom because they have taken shelter. They are under the shelter of the king. So therefore, a mm -hmm. Kshatriya's duty is to give protection and therefore uh, the Kshatriya should have that Tej, that Vigor. And they have to show it. If violence is required, they have to show it. It is their duty. Sometimes violence is important to establish peace. Violence mm. is important. Sometimes violence is important to establish peace. Just as how it was important that Arjuna fights that war so that peace is established. If Arjuna, if Krishna did not had not instigated Arjuna to fight that war, if Arjuna mm. war would have gone to the forest without the kingdom, then Duryodhana would have been crowned king and then there mm. would be a lot of non-violence in the kingdom. No, So therefore mm. that violence was required to establish peace. What's the next item? Forgiveness. Forgiveness, Shama. So this is also for everyone, again, but especially for Kshatriyas. So Kshatriyas, they have a lot of power, but when the need arises for uh, small minor mistakes, they should be willing to forgive also. They should be willing to forgive also. So this is also quality. Although you have so much power, you should be willing to forgive the minor offenses of others. Next. Fortitude. Fortitude or dritti. One should be mentally and emotionally strong even when facing difficult situations. So this is for all the uh, categories in the Varnashram system. What is the next item? Cleanliness. Cleanliness. Saucham. So this is especially for the Vaishyas because they are business class. So one should not deal in black marketing. Srila Prabhupada explains. So their body, their mind and their dealings also should be clean. Should be clean. Next. Freedom, freedom, from envy. freedom from envy no freedom from envy one should not be resentful of another living entity see enviousness is something that the first the 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 very reason why we are in this material world is envy only no because we were mm. envious of the position of krishna therefore we are here so mm. envy is the first mistake that we have made mm. see here i had some nice quotes mm. see here when one is envious of the demigods who represent the Supreme Personality of Godhead of the Vedas, which give all knowledge of the cows, Brahmanas, Vaishnavas and religious principles and ultimately of me, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he and his civilization will be vanquished without delay. So just see, we and our entire civilization will be destroyed very quickly if one is envious of all these categories. What? Envious of the Devatas, Envious of God, envious of the Vedas, envious of all those people who are giving knowledge. I'm sorry, envious of the Vedas who are giving all knowledge, envious of the cows, envious of the Brahmanas, envious of the Vaishnavas, envious of the religious principles, and ultimately of me. Then um, Narada Muni says that he and his civilization will be vanquished without delay. This is also a conversation between Narada and Yudhishthira. 
Narada Muni is saying, uh, sometimes a neophyte devotee offers all paraphernalia for worshipping the Lord, but he factually worships the Lord as the deity. But because he is envious of the authorized devotees of Lord Vishnu, the Lord is never satisfied with his devotional service. So just see, even if he may be very, very nicely worshipping the Lord with all kinds of paraphernalia, but if he is envious of the devotees of the Lord, the Lord will never be satisfied with his devotional service. What a statement. What a statement. So this envy, you know, we should be very, very careful of not being envious of the Lord, of his devotees, and of the cows, brahmanas, vaishnavas, the vedas, we have to, of the devatas, we should not be envious. What's the next item? From passion for honor. Passion from honor. Freedom from passion for honor. One should be free from the passion for mm. honor. One must not expect that, yes, I should be honored. Because I am so and so, when I walk into a room, I should be honored. I should be respected. Uh -huh. Okay. So one should be free from the passion for honor. And Srila Prabhupada explains that this is especially for the Shudras. A Shudra should not be puffed up. A Shudra should be willing yeah. to offer respects to the others in order to upkeep the social order. So one is a one is a shudra. If one is, is a shudra, what material? he is least oh. interested in Vedic study. So of the four categories, the brahmanas are. So of the four categories, brahmana, vaish, brahmana, kshatriya, vaishya, and shudra, the brahmanas are most respected because they are most advanced spiritually. After mm -hmm. that comes the Kshatriyas. After them, after that comes the Vaishyas. Vaishya. The Shudras are the least interested or are the are they are uh, least advanced in spiritual life. The Shudras mm -hmm. never even go to a Gurukul because they don't want to. They are not interested. Okay. And it's that it's and because the Brahmanas are spiritually most advanced and the Shudras are spiritually least advanced, that is why it is expected that a Shudra should offer respects to the other categories. Okay, it's not that we it's they are being discriminated because they are workers. So the 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 standard here is how advanced one is spiritually. That is what um, sets who is a shudra and who is a brahmana, kshatriya, vaishya, shudra. The qualities of the work, and we have already discussed how the brahmanas are spiritually the most advanced. So we'll stop here. We'll continue in the next class if Krishna so. Sanctions. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Srimad Bhagavad Gita ki jai. So in these three verses, Krishna has described the divine qualities. Going forward, he will uh, in detail explain the demoniac qualities. So there is more focus on the demoniac qualities than there are on the divine qualities. So that we will see in the next class. If Krishna so sanctions. Do we have any questions or comments? I have a question. Yes. Um, yes. Every human body is accompanied by Atma and Paramatma, right? Paramatma is the super soul and Atma is the individual soul. Yes. So when we leave the body, soul will, based on the karma, go to different, uh, different uh, world, right? But what will happen to the uh, Paramatma? That in is is it an individual Paramatma that in our, <laughs> in our body? Uh, what happens to that? Yeah, so it's the individual Paramatma. It's the very same Paramatma that accompanies the soul in every single body, in every single loka. Wherever the jiva is uh, transmigrating, whichever body he is transmigrating through in any loka, it's the same Paramatma who is accompanying that Atma in, oh, that, okay. in the different bodies. Okay. That's how personal Krishna gets. That's how personal Krishna is with us. It's the same oh. Paramatma who is accompanying us. Oh, okay. Until we reach the spiritual world. The Paramatma mm -hmm. leaves us only when we enter the spiritual world. Even in hell? Yes, even in hell. Paramatma is accompanying us. Yeah, Vivant, you have your hand raised. Um, I have a question. Yes. If the world is on we, know, we usually see them peacefully, but why do they have to show anger sometimes? That's what I don't understand that. So we discussed how anger can be shown by a devotee 
when he uses that anger in the service of the Lord. For example, if somebody is insulting the Lord, if somebody is insulting the mm -hmm. devotees of the Lord, then one can retaliate, then one can show anger. Then that is anger in the service of the Lord. Just as how we saw the examples of Hanuman using the anger in the service of Lord Ramachandra. Okay? Okay. Yeah, Bina Dadlani, you have yeah. a raised? Yes, Mataji, I have a question. Yes. Uh, my, inter my internet was little interrupted when you were saying that if the animal has 20 years of life and he is slaughtered after his 10 years, what happens to the next 10 years? So he has to take birth again in that same body. Let's say somebody had to live in the body of a dog for 20 years. Now he lived only 10 years. He has to again take birth as a dog and live for 10 years in the dog's body before he can go to the next uh, next body in his journey, in his transmigration. So what happens to the karma which was, which was uh, slaughtered, no? The person who slaughtered the... The animal 10 years before his death. Yeah, so he has to take the karmic reaction for slaughtering the animal. He will take the karmic reaction anyway. Oh, so that means the animal has to be reborn for another 10 years to complete In the same his... body. Yeah, in the same body. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? Uh, just a continuation, Mataji. Is it the same with human as well? Uh, if uh, suppose the human has uh, maybe like 50 years and if he commits suicide, maybe at the age of 30, again he has to take the birth again and serve the remaining? Yes, that is a general rule. That is a general rule. But it may be an exceptional case in if the person is a pure devotee, then these general rules don't apply to a pure devotee. Maybe the if a pure devotee, if it happens in the case of a pure devotee, he can go back home back to God. See, these general rules apply only to people who are not surrendered to the Lord because they are under the law of karma. Okay. But when once one surrenders to Krishna, then one is under Krishna. So Krishna can break the rules. Krishna can override the rules. So the general rule is yes. He, even if it's a human body, he has to come back. But how come if a devotee, if he is a pure devotee, he can do suicide? No, no. <laughs> suicide he is not allowed. Not. Suicide is not allowed. Suicide, then he has to take the karmic reaction. See, a pure devotee yeah. understands that the body does not belong to me. The body belongs yeah. to Krishna. So committing suicide is an abominable sin. So it mm -hmm. may appear that he is a pure devotee, but committing suicide is, is an abominable sin and he will have to take the karmic reaction for that. Oh, okay. Mataji, Mataji, what is the karmic reaction for suicidal? Like if a, devo if a devotee is initiated devotee and that devotee suicides only when someone attacks them and he doesn't know what to do and he doesn't know how to save himself, then? No, he commits okay. suicide because he cannot save himself? Sometimes what happens in the dress of devotees, that they attack other devotees and then they people are uh, then the devotees are suiciding they don't know how to react or act they can't fight back so they just suicide so if one is initiated devotee and one commits a sin then the reaction is far more greater it's a more serious crime it's a more serious crime but if someone comes to attack you and you have no way to save your body and as far as possible one should save oneself why would one commit suicide because if other devotees are attacking them, what to do? You you defend yourself till your last breath. Because you want to use the body in the service of Krishna. Okay. My Guru Maharaj says that if one commits suicide, one becomes a Rakshas. Mm -hmm. If one is a Brahman initiate, no, if one has received second initiation, one is a Brahman initiate, then one becomes a Brahma Rakshas. And Brahma Rakshas is far more dangerous than a normal Rakshas. Okay, so if if we are uh, if we are committing the same nonsense, even after surrendering to Guru, even after first, second initiation, then it becomes a more serious crime. Before it would be a Papa, then after that it becomes an Aparada. It's a more serious crime. 
if someone is initiated and they are thinking about suicidal because of a uh, situation and condition and circumstances of getting attacked by uh, different devotees that are called prison do devotees or whatever and they can protect their body and after doing that they become a brahman rakshasa and they have to go under the um, the results or the karmic results to uh, that would be more it will make them more unhappy right and then they will regret that they suicide that they should have taken some other means and what not but once it's done it's it, nobody can say prabhupada cannot save a brahman um, brahman rakshasa Srila Prabhupada actually delivered a ghost. Srila Prabhupada, see, that's the potency of a pure devotee. A pure devotee is like a touchstone. So, so there is this pastime of Srila Prabhupada in his biography where he stayed in a haunted house. And in that haunted house, there was this ghost and the ghost started to trouble him. And actually Prabhupada delivered the ghost by chanting the holy name. So pure devotee, like the Lord, can change the rules of the game. So basically, only if we can even do our japas, then all we have to do is hear from a pure devotee, Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, and will be delivered. But you also have to chant. You don't only hear. You also have to chant because that's what your the pure devotee wants you to do. That's what your guru wants you to do. But if someone is so sinful, they can't chant. Then they only have to hear. From who cannot devotee? chant? Anybody who has a mouth and two ears can chant. <laughs> really. Is it not like that when you are sinful, when you're apradi, when you're Vaishnava apradi, you're uh, Lata Beach? Like, no just... rules and regulations. Anyone, anytime, any place, under any circumstances can chant. Anybody who has a tongue and two ears can chant. There is no excuse. Maybe they won't but get taste. Spiritual, but spiritual they... person will not suicide. Even if they don't get the taste, there's chant. Taste mm -hmm. will come later. It yes, yes. Later. If they offend, they won't get tossed, they taste, but uh, sooner or later, they will get. Yeah, there is no excuse for one who is not chanting. Ignorance is no excuse. No, If you are breaking the red light when you are driving and, uh, and you tell the policeman, oh, I was not aware that I have to stop the red light. Is he going to let you go? No, because you are supposed <laughs> to know. You are supposed to know. So even ignorance yes. is no excuse for not chanting. Mataji, I have a small question. Yes. Regarding that uh, Haridas Thakur story. Which story? Haridas Thakur you told, na, the Chota Haridas. Yes. Actually, yes. I heard he is uh, by Nityananda Prabhu. He delivered. Means Nityananda Prabhu showed mercy upon him. Like he is allowed into that beginning. He is allowed into what? I mean, actually, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is not allowed. <clears throat> but Nityananda Prabhu, because of his mercy, he is allowed into, again, the Sankirtana moment, something like that. But he committed suicide, no? Yeah, but he is there, allowed, huh? and that's what my question. What, after suicide? No, no, before, uh, something like that. Because he is Nityananda Prabhu, Marsi. Oh, I don't know what was Nityananda Prabhu's part in that. I know that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not forgive him. Even mm -hmm. though he was requested to bring yeah, him yeah. back. He Chaitanya did not Prabhu forgive, not but Nityananda to, Prabhu. No. And even after he, he committed suicide, even then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said that he met with the right, uh, he met with the right, what do you call it? Punishment. Punishment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. So Chaitanya Prabhu, Mahaprabhu did not forgive him even after he committed suicide. Mm -hmm. part, I'm not, I, I don't know, I have to read it up. Yes, sure. Hare Krishna. So then Haridas Thakur became ghost because he committed suicide? No, Haridas Thakur did not commit suicide. Junior oh, no, 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 Haridas sorry. committed suicide. Okay? I'm sorry, so I'm sorry. Don't confuse the two time. personalities. Junior Haridas. So did he become a ghost? That description is not there in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. I don't know. It's not there. It's not described. So we cannot speculate. Okay. Okay, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Anything else? All right, then see you all in the next class yes. next week if Krishna so sanctions. Till then, have a nice weekend, Krishna. Conscious. Thank you. Vancha Kalpa Krishna. Kripa Sindhu Vyavacha. Patitana Pavane Pyo. Vaishnava Pyo. Namo Namaha. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Shri Mataji. Jai. 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 Jai.